Tonight on Sports Final, we'll catch you up on all the action from the South and East Hill from over the weekend. We'll take a look at some Section 4 high school sports. And we'll be joined by Bombers defensive coordinator Mike Turper to talk about the team's three-game winning streak. All that and more coming up tonight. Starts Hello and right welcome now. to another episode of Sports Final. I'm John Sokoloff. And I'm Alex Hessig. It was another exciting weekend of sports on the South Hill and East Hill. It was especially action-packed uh, weekend on the gridiron for the Bombers. John, you were actually there, so how about you tell us what went down? Well, Alex, you know, the Bombers were uh, riding a two-game Liberty League streak, winning streak under quarterback Wahid Nabi, going into yesterday's game against Rochester. And they were uh, undefeated in the conference as well. It's their first year in the Liberty League and their first meeting between the two teams. Uh, Ithaca had a lot of momentum going into this one after beating Hobart in the final seconds last week. So 3-0, 2-0, trying to get to 3-0. Let's take a look at the highlights. Bombers riding after uh, being 2-0 on the year in the Liberty League. Wahid Nabi 2-0 in each of his starts. 340-plus passing yards in each of those starts as well. And again, first meeting between the teams. First drive early on, Nabi finds his favorite target on the curl route. Will Gladney, who gets into the end zone for six. The extra point by David Prudhomme would be blocked. Six nothing Bombers. Next drive, a 60-yard pass. Catch and run by Andrew Vito. Set up a Nick Servoen wildcat play. Bombers up 13-0. Then jet sweep. Anthony Capozzi, the, the other return man, not Jordan Shem, gets it. It's into the end zone for a touchdown. 20 to nothing Bombers. This offense rolling, having a lot of fun. They would go on to win 46 to 6, Alex, and they've just been rolling offensively. Third week in a row where they got the win under Wahid Nabi's belt. He didn't play that second half. He was 17 for 21 in that first half, though, and had 206 yards and a touchdown. So, unfortunately, the streak of 340-plus passing yards is over, but the Bombers got the win, and now next week they'll play RPI in another Liberty League game. Yeah, it was a great showing for them. And while the Bomber football team has been on a roll, the Ithaca men's soccer team has had an up-and-down campaign so far with the record hovering around 500 all season. The Bombers have been searching for the consistency to string together some wins. This past weekend, they welcomed the Hobart Statesmen for a Liberty League clash. Let's head to Carpwood Field and take a look at the highlights. <clears throat> and starting off here in the 26th minute, junior midfielder Zach Lickman winning the ball back for Ithaca. Passes it to Nate Schoen, who shoots from outside the box, but it's saved by goalkeeper Morgan Sawyer. Now switching gears into the second half, Hobart strikes first. Patrick Schultz puts away the header. Hobart takes a 1-0 lead early in the half. Now Hobart looking to strike again. Pete Critchlow shoots and misses, and the save's made by Ithaca's Dan Hankley, keeping the deficit just at one. A few minutes later, the Ithaca defender loses the ball to Critchlow. Critchlow takes the ball down the end line and shoots within the eight-yard box, but again, the save's made by Hankley. Now, Ithaca on the counter looking to put pressure on Hobart and pass from midfielder looking for Jack Oaks, who's making a run. And Hobart's Morgan Sawyer comes off his line, and he'll scoop this up before Oaks could get there. And Oaks is clearly looking for the foul here, but he just doesn't get it. And the deficit still won nothing. Now Hobart got fouled setting up a dangerous free kick. And Patrick Scholes takes this free kick, shoots it on goal. And Hinkley saves it, distributes it to his midfielders for the counter. And Ithaca loses the ball in the midfield. And Hobart's Ben Orr takes it down the field. Orr puts it over Hinkley and puts Hobart up 2-0. Ithaca's last chance to get something going. Tom Dillman steps up to take the free kick. Morgan Sawyer is there for this save, and Hobart will go on to win the game 2-0, dropping the Bombers down to 4-5-1 and one on the season. Now, we're our very own J.J. Klein was at the game. We're going to send it to him and his report. Hobart 2-0 to move to 0-3 in Liberty League play. The Bombers off to a rough start in conference play, but they feel like they're almost where they need to be. We compete with every single Liberty League team and we could beat every single one. It just hasn't come our way so far. I think every the three Liberty League games we've had, we've probably been the better team for 60 minutes and then in the end, we've lost all of them. Yeah. Ithaca got off to a three and one start in non-conference play, but have since faltered, losing four of their last five matches. The team feels as though they've outplayed opponents 
but haven't been able to put together a complete game. For 60 or 70 minutes, I thought we were the better team against Hobart, who I believe is one of the top, you know, maybe 30 teams in the country. We just need to focus for 90 minutes. We've had games where we focus for 75 minutes, 80 minutes, but I don't think we've put together a full 90 yet. Despite the Bombers' struggles, they feel they need just a few more things to go their way in order for their play to result in victories. I think we're right there, and it just comes down to two moments, and like we haven't been getting it each game. We honestly have had a chance to win. Ithka will have a chance to get in the win column in Liberty League play this weekend against Bard. Reporting from Carpwood Field in Ithaca for Sports Final, J.J. Klein, ICTV. J.J. mentioned in his report there, the men's soccer team did indeed find success against Bard this weekend, defeated them 5-0, so they're back at that 500 mark on the season. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll take a look at some Cornell football as the team had their home opener this weekend. And then a little later, we'll be joined by Bombers defensive coordinator Mike Turper, so make sure to stay with us. And on social media, follow us on all those platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Instagram at ICTV underscore Sports Final, Facebook at Sports Final, and Twitter at ICTV Sports Final. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Sports Final, and before we take a look at that crazy Cornell football game over the weekend as they took on Harvard, uh, before we take it to Show Call Field, let's take a look at the rest of the Bombers sports that occurred over the weekend. IC's women's soccer team has had a slow start to the season. They were coming off a 3-0 loss to William Smith last Wednesday, who was ranked fifth in the nation. The Bombers were ending a three-game road trip and were 0-3 in conference play heading into Friday's Liberty League game against Bard. They barely fell in that one, one nothing to the Raptors after a goal in the 32nd minute by Katie Hopper. They still have yet to win a game in the Liberty League and return home on Friday in their next test against Skidmore. They're 0-4, though, on the year in the conference. Let's take a look at a little volleyball action as the team hosted Clarkson yesterday. They dropped that first set, but then the next three they won to improve to 3-1 and one in the Liberty League and increase that win streak to four. Joel Goldstein led the way for the Bombers with 12 kills as Ithaca returns to action this Wednesday for a little Cortica volleyball match here at Ben Light Gymnasium. To field hockey we go, and the Bombers were looking to bounce back after getting shut out at home by Cortland 3-0. They had their hands full on the road against Skidmore, who was ranked 12th in the nation. They held their own early and were only down by one going into that second half, but they ended up giving up three goals in the span of seven minutes, so they fell in that one. They also shut out the Bombers 17-3, but their next Liberty League test is against Rochester this Friday at Higgins Stadium. So that wraps up uh, everything Bomber sports related. We'll be joined by Coach Torpa a little bit later. But Alex, uh, what went on with uh, Cornell football? Well, it was a busy week on the South Hill, but there was one huge matchup on the East Hill, and it took place on the gridiron. Cornell welcomed Ivy League rival Harvard to Shlokoff Field on Saturday afternoon, and Cornell was looking to pick up their first win on the season. Let's head out there and take a look at the highlights. 
Let's get right into the action. Harvard facing a second and goal, and Lance Northington gets the rock, punches it in for a one-yard touchdown. Harvard up 7 nothing early. Later in the first quarter, Cornell defense trying to contain Harvard, and Nick Gisanti stops out the run, drops the crimson running back, dead in his tracks for the loss. Now to the second quarter, Cornell takes over. First and 10, Dalton Banks completes the pass to Chris Walker for the 23-yard gain. The Harvard 49 for the big red first down. A few minutes later, Harvard strikes on third and 13 in a big way. Jake Smith connects with Jake Barron for the 36-yard touchdown. And here Smith drops back, and this is when he for the 36-yard score to put the big or put Crimson up 14 nothing. Now following the score, Cornell's driving down the field from the Harvard 47. Dolan Banks hooks up with Chris Walker for the 17-yard pickup as he spins his way to the Harvard 30. And that's a big first down for the Big Red. Now, same drive a little bit later. Cornell facing a first and goal from the two. And, oh. Now, keeping our focus on football, we're going to send things over to John with defensive coordinator Mike Turper. Thanks, Alex. I'm joined here by the great Bombers defensive, defensive coordinator, Mike Turper, coach, how's everything going? Thanks for coming on. We, we love having you. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Always a pleasure to, to talk football with you, whether it's NFL football, Ravens, Raiders. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bomber football. But, uh, you know, talking about that Cornell game, what a great win for the Big Red. First oh. time in 12 years beating Harvard. That was, that was huge. Outstanding. Great game. But uh, let, let's talk a little Bomber football with you. Let's start out with uh, just like the big picture. You know, the first season, how's everything been going for yeah. you so far? Oh, it's been going great. You know, it's, it started with the players. They bought into our systems both on the offensive side of the ball, the defensive side of the ball. They come every day with a hard hat, business-like mentality to practice, and they have fun. They're enjoying the game. They're enjoying the process. We're very much a process-oriented program rather than a results-oriented program. So we're really proud of the guys and, and the way they've been working. Now, taking a look at the program from week one to now, how much has it progressed in your eyes? A great deal. I think any time that you've got a new defensive system, you've got a new offensive system, you've got new personalities that, that are coming together, it's going to take some time to grow. And, and week by week, we're seeing our guys continue to stay on that incline. And, and there has been no plateau, no complacency. And um, you know, that's, that's what we're looking for out of our guys week in and week out. You got a ton of praise for your guys, as you rightfully should. And just coming off a huge win yesterday against Rochester, 46-6. to what stood out to you the most about the defense in that game? Well, we're certainly very much under construction still, but I really like the way that we're continuing to communicate both verbally and non-verbally. Everyone's on the same page. Guys are getting aligned properly, and we're running like madmen to the football. And that's something that we've preached from day one here, and that will never change with our defense, is that we are a bunch of wild animals when the ball is, is run or when somebody catches the ball, we're all getting there, all right? We're like a pack of mad dogs. So. I'm really liking the way that our guys are, are competing and they're starting to execute at the level we're looking for as well. So very pleased with that. Like a pack of, of mad dogs. I like that. Yeah. Um, you're saying this defense is still under construction, only 18 points per game on the year, but you haven't allowed a 100-yard rusher. You haven't allowed a 100-yard receiver this year. The defense has looked really good, but what is that one thing that you really just need to work on, you think, like moving forward? Well, we, we try not to look at stats too much. You know, we're looking at the big picture. The only stat that we really care about is how many points that the opposing team is putting up on the board. Now, obviously, you look at the statistic, you say, okay, we need to work on third down efficiency a little bit more from a defensive perspective. We need to work on our red zone defense a little bit. But the truth is, they've only been in the red zone 11 times. So, you know, we're doing a good job of keeping them out of there, but uh, we certainly have to be better in those phases. And the linebacking core, you've given me a lot of praise to them. Coach Swanstrom has as well. Two out of the four captains are in the linebacking core, guys that have been playing since they were freshmen, Dan Loizos and Kenny Bradley. How have they been as leaders on this football team? I feel very blessed as the defensive coordinator, coming in as a defensive coordinator, first time defensive coordinator, to have the leaders that we have on defense, particularly from the seniors. And, um, you know, they've done a great job of being an extension of me on the field. Um, and making sure the rest of our guys are dialed in, focused on a week-to-week -week basis. So it, it's, been a, it's been a great um, great tool to have as, as a coach, to have guys like that that you know are going to bring the guys along with them. Definitely lead by example there. Uh, I've noticed that at practice you work a lot with uh, Aaron Francis, like after practice is concluded, and he's done great in training camp. I noticed he was number two on the two deeps, and now he's starting doing a very good job. What's, what's his ceiling? 
His ceiling, I, I'm not, I don't think we even know what his ceiling is, but I know that he's going to show up every single day and he's not going to be complacent. He knows that there's things that he needs to continue to work on. Um, but he's shown week in and week out that he can be an elite cornerback at this level. And I am just, I am just excited to see what the future holds for him as he continues to work, as we continue to work on the little detailed techniques of the position. Because as you know, the cornerback position um, you know, is one of the most physically taxing positions. And you have to be very, very detailed with your technique to be, to be elite. And that's what he's looking to be. So Aaron's been a great... Um, great bright spot within our defense, but I know that he is not satisfied with where he's at one bit, so we're going to continue to work at it. Coach, appreciate your time as always. Thanks for coming on. We're going to send it back to Alex at the desk, but good luck this week against RPI. Awesome, man. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, John, for that interview. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, our high school sports host, Ben Carlton, will bring us some Section 4 sports action, and he'll take us through his boom or busts. We'd also like to remind you that our show is presented by the Bees Knees British Imports. And be sure to follow us on social media on Instagram at ICTV underscore Sports Final. Give us a thumbs up on Facebook at Sports Final. And Twitter, follow us at ICTV Sports Final. Section 4 football action coming for you. And we'll start right here in Ithaca. We've got the Ithaca Little Red hosting the Elmira Express. Starting things off, we have, like I said, the Ithaca Little Red hosting the Elmira Express right here in Ithaca, New York. Uh, starting things off, that's a trick play. This is Eric Ashley on some deception. He ends up with the ball. He's going down the right side. He will not be touched as he beats everybody, gets into the end zone for the early touchdown, excuse me, later on. Elmira knocking on the door here. That's Charlie Mann going up the middle, showing off some of that strength. He pushes through for the score with Elmira putting the pressure on in the first half. The Little Red looking to make big plays. That's Mason Booth heaving it up for Lewis Webster. Says, give me that. Give if the Ithaca Little Red six points on that play. Webster taking away what looked to be a sure interception. Elmira driving now. This is Charlie Mann yet again. He's following the big heavies all the way to the goal line. Runs into a couple defenders, but unable to be stopped as the Express take an even bigger lead over Ithaca. Late in this game, this one hurts. That's number 75, Dan Fedor, just running over his man as Ithaca loses this one 61-6. to A big blowout there. Switching gears a little bit, we've got two state-ranked teams going on now. It's Tioga going up against the Elmira Notre Dame team. Tioga up 8-0 here in the first quarter. This is Gary Roppers looking for a short completion there. He will find, excuse me, like I said, Gary Roppers looking for Jack Chapman. That is a short eight-yard completion. Elmira moving downfield methodically for that drive ultimately would stall out. Now, Elmira showing some blitz there. Handoff is to the Tigers' Nick Klossner. He gets outside. He's turning on the afterburners. He will not be touched as he marches into the end zone. That one called back for holding, though. Later in the same drive, this time it's a pitch to Justin Rockwell. He makes a nice cut there. Now it's his turn. He gets outside, but he'll be taken down to the three-yard line. Tioga would punch that one in, though, going up 15-0. 
He had to throw a pass in this game. This is Connor Hutchinson. His first pass of the game is a dime right to the hands of Nick Klostner. Klostner gets the touchdown there after that one getting called back earlier. 22-0 Tioga after that score. Turns into a 36-6 win over Elmira Notre Dame. So, you've seen me at the high school desk before, but I've got something new for you this week. Welcome to Ben's Boomer Bust. I'll be taking a look at one player or even a team who had a boom performance and one who had themselves a rough outing earning that bust label. So, here we go. My first ever boom on Sports Final goes to the one, the only, Ithaca College football team. We saw defensive coordinator Turper on here earlier. After starting out 0-2, they turned to freshman quarterback Waheed Nabi for week three. Since then, they've outscored opponents 94-40, to including a blowout 40-6 to win over Rochester this past Saturday, which our own John Sokoloff had the play-by-play -play call for. Taking a look at some of the Bombers boom, Bombers boom moments more recently, sophomore running back Isaiah DeHady had himself a 100-yard, two-touchdown afternoon in that win versus Rochester. And fellow running back Tristan Brown reached the 2,000 career rushing yards mark in week four in another win versus Hobart, a game where he also scored a late game-winning touchdown. Wahid Nabi's earned himself a pair of Rookie of the Week honors from the Liberty League, and D. lineman Brian Gill also nabbed the Defensive Player of the Week nod. The Bombers are clearly rolling right now, and they are my boom for this week. And on the other side of the coin, the first ever bust goes to Yankees manager Joe Girardi. In Game 2 of the ALDS last Friday, New York Yankees reliever Chad Green supposedly hit Lonnie Chisenhall, loading the bases in an 8-3 game. However, Yankees catcher Gary Sanchez indicated to Girardi to challenge the play, saying the ball hit the bat, and replays show this to be true. Girardi did not take the advice, though, and in the very next at-bat, Indians fielder Francisco Lindor cranked a grand slam right down the line to trim the Cleveland deficit to 8-7. Of course, the Yankees would go on to lose this one 9-8 in 13 innings. So why is Girardi the bust and not Green? Because post-game, Girardi told reporters that he didn't challenge the play so he could keep his pitcher in rhythm? Come on, Joe. There's no reason to not to challenge that play, and it seriously hurt the Yankees' chances of winning the game. For what it's worth, in Game 3 at Yankee Stadium tonight, when Joe Girardi got introduced, the Yankees fans booed him. Clearly, the fans of the stadium are siding with me and Joe Girardi being this week's bust on Sports Final. That's Ben's Boomer Bust for this show. I'll be back next week, and hopefully we can find my friend Taylor somewhere around here. Be sure to keep up with Sports Final on all our social media platforms to see some more behind-the-scenes action on how this fantastic show gets made. Welcome back into Sports Final. It's been a busy show, but we've still got a little more to get to. It wouldn't be a show if we didn't bring you the top five plays from the week that was. Let's take a look at that top five. Now coming in at number five, it's the Jake connection. Quarterback Jake Smith to his tight end, Jake Barron, for the 36-yard score for the Crimson. However, Cornell will win that game. Number four, a little section four love. Tioga running back Justin Rockwell bounces to the outside for the huge gain for the Tigers, getting stopped just short of the end zone. Almost got in, man. Now Close. back to the college game. Number three, I see men's soccer versus Hobart. And the Statesmen score on this beautiful header in their 2 nothing win. Now at number two, a little college football action, some Ithaca Bombers. 
Running back Tristan Brown is a bad man on this touchdown run, and he wouldn't be denied going all the way. Even the helmet comes flying off. And in number one, we'll keep it in the Ithaca Bomber football family. Sophomore running back Isaiah DeHaiti goes off for the ADR touchdown run, showing the coaches how much depth there is in that backfield, capping off a huge Bombers win. Isaiah DeHaiti, Alex, definitely um, wanting to show and prove to the coaches that when Tristan Brown graduates after this year that he wants that starting running back spot, and that's for sure. Let's take a look at the week ahead, though, for the sports that are coming up this week. And we just saw the... Bombers uh, football game. They'll be playing at RPI this Saturday, and if they win, that gets them to 4-0 in the Liberty League and really enhances their chances of winning that league in their first year in it. I see volleyball playing Cortland, a little Cortica volleyball action this Wednesday at 6 o'clock, and men's and women's soccer for both I see are playing Skidmore. Men's are going to be at home on Friday at Carpwood Field at 4, but the women will be on the road at 4 as well, and then the I see field hockey team playing against Rochester Friday at 4, and again, the Bombers football team is playing at RPI this week in another big Liberty League test in their fourth game in a row. Yeah, it's just a really crazy time in Bomber land. Every, all the seasons are in full swing right now. It's just wild to keep up with it all. Big fan of uh, Ben's Boomer Bus segment. It's the uh, first time that we're doing that here on, on Sports Final, and I think he did a, did a pretty good job. But that's going to do it for us here for this week's show of sports final you'll find us here again next week we also want to make sure that you know that our show is brought to you by the bees knees british imports our lovely sponsor and to make sure to follow us on instagram twitter and facebook on sports final as well take care and we'll see you next week